Hey guys, welcome to the fifth episode of Renew. I recently saw this movie called Kho Gaye Hum Kaha, and it's a beautiful depiction of social media and life as someone who is in their early twenties, you know, navigating youth, friendships, careers, exploring all of that. I thought it was real and was very well done. The only thing that ticked me off was the depiction of this influencer in the movie. She's dating one of the main characters. Now she's portrayed to be someone who's very ruthless, who will use money just for fame and success. A fake, and she cheats and she uses her trainer according to her needs, just to be more successful and get ahead in her journey. I feel like being successful in your career can sometimes come with making tough choices, but it should never come at the cost of hurting those you love. Or using people, and overall, there are just like multiple disses in the movie about influencers. Also, this whole like drive, passion, and ruthlessness in terms of your career and success—it's either appreciated or ignored in every other career, right? Like people, especially with men, they get away with this all the time. It's classic, but just because it's not happening in front of your eyes does not mean that it's not happening at all. So these are just double standards, and you can't. I feel like the lens of viewing influencers and the narrative needs to be changed. Now I understand that it's a movie, but demeaning creators has become such a common thing. And the irony is that you still consume their content all day long. So you basically you go to their house, you eat their food, and then you shit on it. What are you doing, bro? It's so stupid. If you don't like it, just unfollow. Like stop consuming it. I myself would make a lot of jokes, and I diss for this whole career in terms of like it's not a real job, and that was only because. It was so effortless to me because I was really enjoying it. Just because I enjoy it and it does not seem like quote unquote work does not mean that it's not a real job. Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, in its entirety, it is just marketing. It's a new form of marketing, and every job comes with a responsibility. But not everybody follows it. My issue is simply with the generalization and the stereotyping of creators. Also, something that gets missed is that there is no traditional route or path. For this career, like any other creative field, you have to make your own path. So the person who is trying to do this usually follows the path and studies the ways that their superiors have taken. And sometimes, because of this certain formats of editing, shooting, and promoting, it gets back till the creator realizes that perhaps it's not relevant or authentic to him personally. And then they shift, but this takes time. You're figuring it out on the job, so we can't be so quick to judge. I also feel like influencers have replaced the hate that models and actors used to get before for not having a real job, because traditional education is not a mandate to land a job in these fields. And like any other creative field, it's never a straight path, and that's the beauty of where the journey is everything. And the insecurity and the inconsistency of these jobs. Can make it really taxing. It's just that the struggles are different here. Also, this whole like influencer and the wild trend, and you know the mentality behind it. I understand that it might be weird for people to just see that like people are just taking out their phones and recording every single thing. But would you find it weird if someone is constantly the whole day in front of his computer and he's analyzing data or he's like making Excel sheets? Like that's not weird, right? So why is this weird? They're just doing their job. They're just way more passionate about it, and it's not a nine to five. It's a full time job. It's like you can always be doing more. It it never stops. So the highs are personal, and the lows are personal too. So another thing that people like really miss out on is that being a creator is like a full time job. You're doing the job of an entire ad agency. You're strategizing. You're writing. Like you're scripted out. You shoot it. You are the photographer. You edit it. You style yourself with the hair and the makeup artist most of the time. This is not like a nine to five. It's a full time job. It's way more than a nine to five because it never ends. You could always be making more, doing more, thinking of fresher ideas. It's a non stop cycle. You're just at it without any breaks. You they show up every day on your feeds. Most of them learn on the job, and like any profession, they get better over time. I've seen amazing growth. In terms of work and efficiency, not only for myself but also multiple other creators who just keep doing these things till they reach a stage where they can start delegating it to others. In an industry where you are directly the product, whether it's sports, film, broad politics, you will be celebrated, and if you're aspired, you will be put on a pedestal. Now, what I don't understand is that why are actors put on a pedestal, right? Like, why do they get the fame that they do and the clout? If it's it's like any other job, why don't writers and directors who put all their months, time, and energy into a certain project and creating it, nurturing it, coordinating and developing their sharing their vision with multiple other people, get the love, 
the money and the fame that actors do. I think it's because actors are the visual product of their stories. They give you hopes and dreams. It's relatable enough for you to connect to the character, but also aspirational because in the end, the hero wins, right? So that gives the audience hope for themselves. And the audience relates to the story that they're telling. And that is literally what social media and influencers do. But just in real life, nobody is perfect. You have absolute choice in what content you're trying to consume. It depends entirely on your taste, your interactions with the algorithm. If you're being fed shit content that you diss, it's because you chose it. And that's on you. I have seen tremendous growth in my mental health because of being influenced by the mindsets and tips of self-development, spiritual productivity influencers over the year. Even a fee as superficial as fashion can be so significant for say like a young girl who grew up watching Bethany Moda videos and who was watching Kiara Faragni live her life go for multiple fashion weeks and that led to the birth of a dream in her and she decided to go down that path and chase that cut and now she's making it happen for herself. So it is aspirational but it has crazy talk to nurture and grow your life. Recently I read this article on Kiara Faragni where basically she falsely announced charity for an organization that she was part of. And while that is wrong and can come across as deceiving and of a personal gains, the article really took shots on her journey and her struggle and the credibility of that, which I thought was so unnecessary in this context. It was just a diss at influencers and the whole era of creators in general. And I think this is bound to happen because this is media, right? We're the new journalists in a sense. So, journalists have always been dead and journalists have also this. The whole idea is to create like a conversation. Cancel culture, in a sense, can honestly just be like a whole another podcast for me because I just don't understand it. I feel like, why do you have the time to mock a random person online? Like, what are you doing with your life? I think as creators, we have a platform to motivate, inspire or entertain, you know, whatever your drug is, our audiences. And we can honestly create such a powerful change and nurture the life of a child or a viewer, whoever it is, right? And actually help help them transform their lives. So for example, I want to share like my personal experience. I was obsessed with David Dobrik while growing up. And I understand that off late, he's been a part of a lot of controversies. And he's been cancelled a few times, probably rightly so. But there was a time in my life when I would watch his videos and I would feel less lonely. And it would help me take my sadness away. It would give me some hope and joy. And I'm... I can't, it touched a chord in me. So I can't forget that. Like he helped me in my tough times by just creating those wholesome, funny videos. When you are in an industry, when you're the product, right? The highs and the rewards will be amazing, but the failures and the setbacks also hit more because they're more personal. Is that not high stakes? And he still do it anyway because of a voice and dream inside them to make it, to make something of their lives. So I want to ask you, is that what is something that you can learn from creators? And that is something we should generalize and say, how to celebrate life, being unapologetically yourself, confidence, not taking yourself too seriously, and romanticizing yourself and your life. Being a creator myself and meeting multiple creators over the span of the, these last few years, I can confirm and say that at the end of the day, they're nice, just like you. Maybe a little insecure, just like you. And they have big dreams, just like you. And you can't hate someone for these things. It's what makes us humans. Just like you. Damn, that was too good. Like, that was insane. Like, I killed it.